Hello everyone, this is Earth Science teacher Tim Martin, and in this video we'll take a look at weather measurement and weather mapping. Much of this information we've discussed in previous videos, but I'd like to summarize this all in one location. We discussed temperature as the measurement of energy in the Earth's atmosphere. It can be measured with either electrical or alcohol thermometers. Numeric temperature data may be plotted out on a map or color-coded such as we see here giving us a graphical representation of what the temperature is like in any location in the country. Barometric pressure, a measurement of the weight of the atmosphere, can be measured with aneroid barometers, mercury barometers, even the trends may be measured with something as simple as this weather glass. Numeric pressure data, once again plotted out on a map, can be turned into a graphical representation as we see here. Humidity, the measurement of how much water is in the atmosphere may be measured with hygrometers or psychrometers. Once again, we can take the numeric data, put it on a map of the country, or we can represent it graphically with colors as we see here. Precipitation certainly affects our lives on a regular basis. The measurement of rain, snow, sleet, and other precipitation may factor into our weather forecasts. Here we see a rain gauge. The one on the left is the standard National Weather Service 4-inch rain gauge. You'll notice that a funnel leads to an inner tube. This amplifies the catch so we can measure rain very carefully with precision down to 1 one hundredth of an inch. Snow, on the other hand, may be a little more difficult. To measure snow, a snowboard is a light-colored board elevated off the ground, so any snow does not melt quickly then simply measure the depth with a ruler. Frequently, we also take a core sample of the snow, melt that to see what its snow water equivalent may be. Some of the finest precipitation maps are produced by COCORAS, the Community Collaborative Rain, Hail, and Snow Network. This is a collection of reports from over 15,000 participants around the country. We can measure the wind. Measuring the speed and direction of the wind lets us know how the atmosphere is moving. A weather vane will tell us the direction of the wind. We see that up on top. And the anemometer, the spinning cups down below, can be calibrated to tell us the speed of the wind. The wind vectors represented on the left show us the direction of the wind, and the numeric data in the upper right show us the speed of the wind. We also measure air high above the surface of the Earth. There are approximately 100 locations around North America where we release weather balloons at least twice a day. These measure properties of the atmosphere far above the Earth's surface. The radiosonde, which has an array of instruments, including thermometers and humidity sensors, also has a radio transmitter as well as a GPS sensor. These can help us determine the temperature at various points in the atmosphere, as well as the speed and direction that the balloon is traveling. We can use this to determine wind speed at various altitudes. This is tremendously useful to predict the overall motion of storm systems. Besides direct measurement, we also use remote sensing. Using radio waves is very useful to determine location of precipitation. Here we see several radar stations. The one on the left is in north central Indiana. Under the large spherical dome is a radar dish. Radio waves may be sent out and they will reflect off of any material falling through the atmosphere, like rain, snow, and hail. That again can be graphically represented as we see on this map here. The most remote of remote sensing is done from satellites. National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration maintains several geostationary operational environmental satellites. These may take photographs and other measurements of the Earth's atmosphere from geostationary orbit. Visible satellite images show us the location of clouds and storm systems. But what about nighttime? Infrared measurements can measure the temperature of clouds. This can be done day or night. Finally, there are also sensors on board the satellites that can measure the location of atmospheric water vapor. This can be measured at various points throughout the Earth's atmosphere. All of this data can be combined into making surface weather maps. 
Here we see the high pressure system and low pressure systems, as well as the lines of equal pressure contoured across the country. If we represent all of this data together on one map, it gets a bit confusing. So let me highlight this station out at Bermuda. Let's investigate this a little further. There's something called a station model. This is a group of numbers and symbols that represent the weather in a certain location. It may be easier to color code this to explain the different numbers and parts of the diagram. The circle in the center represents the sky conditions. If it's cloudy, the circle would be fully colored in. 50% clouds, halfway, 25% cloudy, only a quarter would be colored in, and so on. The number in the upper left represents the temperature. The number in the lower left represents the dew point. On the right, we'll see a few numbers that are the last three digits of barometric pressure measured in millibars. The 9 or 10 that precedes these numbers has been omitted, so if we see a number like this, we can assume this would represent 1,003.2 millibars. The red vector coming off the circle shows us the wind direction, and the barbs at the end of that vector are wind speed. A long barb represents 10 knots, a short barb represents 5 knot winds. Simply add the barbs up to find out the wind speed. Finally, on the left-hand side between the temperature and dew point, there may be conditions. A few example conditions may include dots representing moderate or heavy rain. If those dots are replaced by asterisks, that indicates snow is falling. Some others, the up and down triangles, may represent hail. Horizontal lines represent fog. The graphic for thunderstorms may represent a cloud with lightning. And of course, we have symbols for tropical storms and hurricanes. There are many, many more station model condition symbols than what I have represented here. So let's just take a look at example one. In this case, we can see that it is overcast with a south wind at five knots, temperature of 30 degrees Fahrenheit, a dew point of 29 degrees, pressure of 1002.3, and there's moderate snow. Example two, it's mostly cloudy with a southwest wind at 20 knots, temperature of 65, dew point of 63, a pressure of 1,007.3 millibars. Back to the big weather map. There's a lot going on here, but if we take a look here at this station in Bermuda, we can see that the temperature is 84 degrees with a dew point of 73. It's a clear day with winds from the northwest at 10 knots. Let's take a look at one more example. Here in north central Mexico, temperature of 72, dew point 68, a pressure of 1010.1, light wind from the northwest, cloudy with rain. All of this numeric data, along with pressure systems and frontal boundaries, is tremendously useful for predicting the weather. Are you ready to give it a try? Thanks for watching and have a great day.